All right, guys, you definitely wanted it, so here it is. Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name's Ryan, or RJR Productions, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how I made my Phase 2 Commander Wolf costume completely out of cardboard. Remember, this is part two. The helmet was in part one. These are two pieces I have for the chest. So they kind of connect like that. And the shoulder straps go out at an angle. So when you curl them, they'll be angling this way from the front view. Then I'm just gonna glue a little piece of cardboard in between them on the back side to stick them together. So what I just did is I glued these pieces together with a little strip in the middle kind of tapered these edges so they would fit better. Now I'm starting to glue it to this one main chest piece, as you can see here. And I'm just building up this angular lip that goes all the way around the side of the two chest pieces. And then once I have that done, I can trim out this. So I'll cut back when I have all of these angles done, including the ones on the sides here. So now this is where I am on the chest plate right now. As you can see, I have all the angles done here. I actually cut some pieces here so it would fit better. And I'm also trimming down the bottom. So now what I need to do is trim out this piece. And once I have that done, we can work on the back side. Now I have the chest plate notch I'll cut out at the bottom. So this is basically supposed to line up with your rib cage. So it goes around the back and then at the front you can crunch down and stuff. And also I cut little slits in the sides so they kind of angle in from a front view. So now what I'm going to do is take this piece of cardboard that I've marked and cut on those marks because that's where it lines up on the back side. And one of the sides is going to be Velcroed and one of the sides isn't. So I'll come back when I have this piece glued on with the Velcro as well. So this is a big change from the last time I recorded. I just got side checked when I was filming. But you can see that this whole back piece is attached now with Velcro on this side so it can open. Just make sure that your stack next to the Velcro so the Velcro is on this side, right? and the stack of cardboard's on this side, make sure it's the same height as the Velcro. So from this side, there's not a noticeable height difference. And then the other side doesn't need Velcro, that one's just glued shut. So now what I did is on top of that, I glued on another piece that's about as high as it needs to be, so these pieces can Velcro to that. But what I'm gonna do right now is do the box on the back. This is where I'm at for the back so far, as you can see I haven't done any of the details on here. But I've got most of these pieces on except for this side so I can show you what the inside looks like. So since you can see that these two panels from the back side is kind of hitting each other at an angle, that makes a spot at the back where it's a peak. So if you glue this piece onto the peak, that means there'll be a space at the top and a space at the bottom where there's a gap since they're both angling outwards. So what that allows you to do is get this nice detail down here. And all these gaps are going to be spackled except for this one because this one's supposed to be there. And then this one at the top also allows you to do that. And if you look at this side piece, you can see how there's an angle in the back piece. So what I need to do is just do the same thing on the other side. And then also these straps up here, I went ahead and just velcroed them in there. So those are just one continuous piece from the front. And these are just little things that I'll have to cover up with spackle. So all these seams I'll have to cover up with spackle. But I'm worried about these ones cracking since when you open it and close it, it flexes. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is on the inside edge, I'm just going to take some clothes hanger wire and just put it along it so it can't bend and the spackle won't crack. So this is what this back panel is looking like that goes right here. As you can see, I've also filled in this one side. So it's just four circles, two little ovals, two rectangles, and this one little raised detail right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this on. And then that's basically it for the chest plate. So then after that, I can work on the lower abdomen piece. So for this lower abdomen piece, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you when it's drawn out, but this piece right here, there's kind of the piece that goes right here and then the piece that goes on it, but you can see a little ridge around the edge and that front piece kind of sticks out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that front piece and then glue on a separate piece that wraps around it that's a little bit beveled. I'll show you right now. So these are the two pieces I've come up with. So this piece will sit inside of this piece and I'll show you what that looks like when it's glued up. It's pretty simple, just sketch out this rough shape. It's like a square with a rounded top. 
and then this piece just fits around it it's just missing the little triangles on each side but i'll show you what that contour looks like when it's all glued together here's what this piece is looking like right now as you can see i've added these little pieces onto it and i've attached it together so you can see that it has that nice curve to it which fits nicely inside the chest piece now i just got to wrap a piece of cardboard from here to here and then i can put it together right here are my pieces for the shoulders so as you can see it's kind of just a piece that dips down like that just look at an image and draw out the outside end and then just put a curve from edge to edge and then just a little bit of darts in between so it can kind of fold together so now what i'm going to do is glue that these darts together and then once that's done glue about an inch piece in between so i'll cut back once i have the darts all glued together Gluing these darts together was very simple. Just on the back side, make sure to put enough glue so it stays together. And then once I had all those darts glued together, I took a strip that was maybe in between two inches and one and a half inches, somewhere in that range. I just cut a strip that was long enough and then I glued it to each side of the shoulder bells pieces and then I just glued them together. And then I repeated on the other shoulder. These are the two pieces I have for both biceps. So as you can see, they're mirrored from each other. And this seam is on the inside edge, kind of facing towards your chest. And then this is at the back. So this is just going to be filled in with another piece of cardboard. It's just another inset. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's all glued together. Just glued into a cylinder. Here are the completed biceps. As you can see, these are the fronts. Seams are on the inside edge and the backs have these little inset details. And there's going to be similar details to this on the legs, so just keep that in mind on the back. But now the next step is to do the forearms. So I'm going to do a time lapse on those because that's not as simple of a shape as this. So let's get into that time lapse. The way I used to figure out the shape was to take a measuring tape, then I wrapped it around my wrist, took the measurement, which was about 8 inches, and then wrapped it around the top of my arm, which was about 11 inches. And then I just cut a strip out that looked about like this. As you can see, the top is 8 and the bottom is 11. And then, in the time lapse, I just glued that together. And then I cut out the little notch at the top. And then I glued on the elbow piece. It's very simple. Just make sure the notch is wide enough so when you bend the elbow, the two sharp corners don't pinch your elbow. Because that's no fun. And then this back elbow piece was just a long strip that was about an inch tall. And then at the back, it kind of dipped down into a trapezoid shape. So I just glued that on on the outside edge and I was really happy with how this looked so I just mirrored it on the other one. Now that you have both of your wrist panels done, you want to pick which one has the calm panel on it. So I'll just pick this one. And now once you put it on, you want to make sure that if you were holding your wrist like this to look at it, kind of like a watch, it would be facing you. So it would be kind of offset from the elbow, it would be positioned about here and the elbow pivot is here. So just keep that in mind. So now I'll come back when I have that base panel done and then I'll show you how I'm gonna do the buttons on it. So I'm gonna be making mine on my left arm, but I'm making mine based off the Clone Wars style. And on the one that's seen in the Clone Wars, it's on his left arm. But then if you're making an episode two one, then it's on the right arm. So just keep that in mind. And I have this piece glued on. So now I'm just going to add pieces of cardboard that kind of fill it in and make it flush with the whole piece. Now you can see I've built up a nice perimeter around this whole piece. So now what I'm going to do is add the six buttons up at front, and then the one big button back here, and then the one tiny button back here. It's very simple, I'll just cut back. I'll be making them out of cereal box cardboard. And there is this forearm piece done. The other one doesn't have any accessories on it. So that one's also done. So I'm quickly gonna make the hand plates that go on the back of the hand, and then I can start working down since I've done everything on the upper body. The hand plate is just this, a piece that looks kinda like this that goes on the back of your hand. And make sure not to curve the whole piece, just put two little lines in it like this. And that'll work very well for the hand at the front. So now I'll just repeat this on another piece. Now that I finished the whole upper body, I'm now working on this piece again. So I'm just adding the belt to that which is very simple, that's why I haven't shown you anything else. It's basically just this three inch tall piece that wraps all the way around. As you can see, it matches up with the seam at the back so you can still open it. And right now I'm just adding these little detail pieces. So you can see this is where it's lined up. So just make sure you have that all in place. And then there's just these detail pieces 
and I'll do a time lapse for those boxes, but I don't really need to show this because it's just one and a half pieces by three inches, and then this whole piece is four inches wide and three inches tall, so just keep that in mind. So this is four inches, this piece is probably about five and a half. So if you're struggling on this piece, if you want to make this, just keep that in mind. Also, I'm gluing this on at the very bottom edge, as you can see there. So there's like a whole two and a half inches there. I only glued a half inch on. So you see that I didn't glue this all the way up here. So there's still plenty of space for this to fit inside the chest piece. So I'll just cut back when I have this all done. And then I'll talk about those boxes a little bit more. Now the boxes are done and they're nice and flattened out. There's just six pieces and a seventh that goes behind this detail. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse me building these together so you can see what that's like. When I glued these boxes together, I just made sure to do it in a clean way so no glue was dried, it spilled over the edge. And what I did is I glued the cardboard pieces on the back of that front plate so there would be no exposed corrugation when you're looking at it from the front. Then that angled piece on the top just gets glued onto those two side pieces and then the back gets glued on as well. The back doesn't need to be curved or anything because it's sticking onto a flat surface. I've seen these pieces get glued on on the very sides, but what I chose to do was more of the episode three style where they're glued on towards the front. So I just glued them on where I thought they would go. This is what the thigh is looking like right now. It's basically depending on how big your legs are. So my top edge is 23 inches and then it's 14 inches down. So this will be the top of my leg to the bottom of my where my knee is. So what I'm going to do is glue it up in a cylinder and then I'll show you what I'm going to do after that. So after I glued it into a cylinder, I just angled off that top bit so this is the top of your leg and it'll just sit nicely in it. So what I'm going to do is cut slits about halfway up just to taper it in all the way around. So I'll cut back when I have that done. So now I'm done doing all those little triangle pieces. So all I did was cut about halfway up this piece and then just cut a slit that was about an inch wide at the base and then it tapered down to nothing at the top. Then I just glue that together and I did it about every one and a half to two inches along the whole piece. And you can see that it got a considerable amount smaller at the bottom than the top. So now I'm just gonna finish up this one and then do the other one. So finishing up this one at the back there's a little detail that kind of curves up like that and then at the front there's a little triangular detail so i'll show you what that looks like when it's done now before i do that other piece here's the base work for the cod piece and this is very simple just make sure that it goes from the top of your piece down to your crotch and then there's some angular bits so i'll cut back when i have that done to show you what they look like i went ahead and duplicated this thigh piece to another one on the opposite side. So now I'm done with those. If you're wondering why I'm not doing a lot of time lapse in this video, it's because I want to cut it under 40 minutes if I did time lapses for each piece. That's just the only reason. So now I'm going to make the knees and the calf pieces. And then after I have that done, I can do the butt plate and then it's ready to spackle. And I'm going to be spackling most of the pieces, so that's going to take a long time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting some of the pieces so for example, this piece can be painted white, and then since these pieces are majority white, they'll be painted gray, so I can mask less. So these will both be painted gray, these will be painted gray, these will be painted white since they're majority gray, and then I can just mask off where the white remains, and then everything else will be gray. So now the remaining stuff is going to be spackled, so I can't really do anything with that. And I haven't shown you how I've made the shin piece yet, but this is one of them. So now I'll go over how I made it with the other one before I show you what I painted. But um, I'll go show you that and then we can get on to painting everything else. So the shin piece starts off as this flat piece right here. Basically all I did is I cut up a rough, rough copy of it. It's just like as much of a good curve as you can get to where it'll be slanted when you roll it up. And then I need to glue this little spat at the bottom. So this is my template piece that I made. I just glued it around a test one and it seemed to fit pretty well. So now I'm just going to trace this out on another piece of cardboard and then roll this up, glue it together with a little bit of Velcro at the seam and then glue on the spat. So I'll come back when I have that all done. Now that you can see I have this bottom piece all done and there's a seam at the front. It's not that noticeable and there's some Velcro in there. 
So now what I'm going to do is wrap this four and a half inch tall piece around. And I'm not worrying about the length because I just glued on the end, wrapped it around, and then cut off whatever's left. And then this is my template for the knee piece. So it kind of just bends along all of these lines, so it kind of conforms the shape of this. As you can see here. So I'll go glue that up, and then I'll come back right before I glue on this piece. So I want to show you something important. I went ahead and made this bomb that goes on the back. I didn't really show you how it was made because it's fairly simple. It's just a toilet paper tube with some pieces of cardboard wrapped around the edges, two caps on the ends, and then this little piece of corrugated cardboard at the end for detail. So now what I'm gonna do is make the butt plate and then I can make the guns in the holsters. So right now I'm working on the pistols and I've come up with this idea. So this is my top piece, two of them, and I'm making two pistols, so I have four of those. Then these are my trigger pieces or the handle pieces. I have four of these as well. And then my idea for the trigger is to use clothes pins that I've chopped off the top with a little coping saw. And this will just be glued kind of like this on the handle on the inside edge so you can use it as a trigger. So I'm going to go glue this up and then show you what that looks like. I'm going to be gluing it about one inch wall. So this is what the little mechanism I came up with looks like. As you can see the trigger is just glued in on there. And there's a little support piece on the side there. So now I can go ahead and glue this edge to the same thing on the inside of this other one. And then just fill in this gap right here and build a wall around the whole thing. So I'll come back when I have that done. The masking of this project has pretty much just been a bunch of trial and error. But I finally got it. So the biceps are the easiest out of the arms and the calves. So as you can see it's just this one piece of tape with a little dip and then two peaks down here and then the same on the other side. That's the same for both biceps. Now I'll move on to the shin, which is basically just this fork in the middle and it splits off on both sides, has a couple of peaks on the back, and then comes back to the middle. These are pretty hard to find reference images for, so I just tried to do my best. Now the forearms are the same thing. So this is the middle where your arm bends. And there's just a couple peaks all the way around the whole piece that wrap around and then come back to the middle. And then this one just has that armor plate or thing calm plate masked off so now i'm just going to go outside and paint the rest of these pieces gray and then these white so now i went ahead and masked off the shoulder pieces so as you can see here we have the wolf pack logo and this one goes on the left shoulder so just keep that in mind and then this one goes on the right shoulder this is looking at a front view, by the way. So this is the left shoulder, this is the right shoulder, but from the front. So, now what I'm going to do is paint them the same gray as I'm using in the rest of the costume. So, what is already masked in blue remains white. Everything else gets covered up with gray paint. So now I'm just going to go do that, and I'll be back once I have that done. So you've seen me mask everything except for the one main piece, and that is the chest plate. So. What I'm going to do is mask off the kind of arcing shape that it has here. And then on the back, I'm going to mask off the gray so it kind of cuts down like this across and then cuts back up to here. So I'll cut back when I have that done. And this is the last piece to mask. Also, something I've been working on is the lower abdomen piece that goes below this. As you can see, I put the comma on, which is just some black fabric. And I've also attached the holsters, which is pretty cool. And this doesn't need a butt plate because the comma covers that up. So this needs to be weathered, but then it's done. And everything else just needs to be weathered. So this is the only piece that needs to be painted. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this up. Now that this piece is all nice and painted, the next step is to weather everything. And then glue the hand plates onto the gloves. So now what you're gonna be seeing in the next shot is the finished armor. So let's cut to the outro. All right, and here it is, the finished costume. I'm very happy with how this came out, and I highly recommend that you make this too. If you have any suggestions on what I should make next, please leave them in the comments down below. Obviously, in my next video, I'll be making that crosshair helmet that I promised a little while ago. This has been RJR Productions, signing off, till next time.